Manchester, the Easter story has been told in a contemporary setting, but of course it's been told in lots of different ways over the centuries. Claire McCollum has been to Battle Abbey in Sussex, where the Battle of Hastings took place, and where they've discovered an ancient carol telling the story of Christ's life. For the best part of 500 years, this abbey was home to a thriving community of Benedictine monks, funded by William the Conqueror to atone for the bloodshed at the Battle of Hastings. Very little survives from those times, thanks to Henry VIII and his Reformation. But one book, complete with a monk's doodles, has brought to life a very special piece of music. The carol's found in a Latin service book and it's a doodle jotted down on the end pages of the manuscript. A couple of pages later there's a little poem about the deaths of three of the late medieval abbots of battle and a couple of recipes for gastric complaints. And for me it provides an insight into the wider religious life of the monks who lived here. And when would it have been sung? Well, in the Middle Ages, carols were never sung in church. They were sung in secular spaces. They could be sung throughout the year. They have, we have carols on the Trinity, on any number of saints. This one is on Christ himself, and Christ's suffering and the example that Christ sets for all of humanity. And we're here at Eastertide, and I think a focus on Christ's suffering would have meant it an appropriate time to be singing at the, the great relief that comes on Easter Sunday, you can break your fast again, it would have been a great time to be singing this carol in somewhere like the Abbot's Hall. To preserve the book for future generations, it has now been safely archived. You're one of the very few to have actually held this book. For somebody like you, what is that like, that it's, experience? It's always fantastic to have an original medieval manuscript in front of you. And so few of these survive from Battle Abbey. The Abbey would have had over a thousand books in its library. 27 survive today. And to be able to look through it and see not the formal text, the formal Latin text, but the things which were individual to the monk who was using this book, who was making these little jottings and thinking these are important things to be writing down. And tell me about its relevance today. It talks basically about not being too materialistic and also thinking about being charitable. The chorus changes from being a follower of Christ's word to being a doer of Christ's word. So after singing this carol, after even dancing to it perhaps in the Abbot's Great Hall here, your life has been improved and you're being kinder both to yourself and to your fellow man. The story of Christ's life is also told in our next song, a contemporary setting of the Christian Crete.
heard your local church bells ringing out today for Easter. But for the past year, the bells of St George's Church in the East Sussex village of Breed, along with churches and cathedrals around the world, have been ringing out a special tune, as the Reverend Kate Botley has been finding out. These bells are ringing a new tune. This composition was created for and named after bell ringer Julie McDonnell. And whenever it's rung, it raises money for her cancer charity. An incredible £7.2 million in less than 12 months. An achievement made all the more remarkable because Julie herself is fighting an ongoing battle with the disease. When you first diagnosed with cancer, you, first of all, you're very shocked then you get numb then you get really angry and quite annoying i think because you want to hit out at somebody so you hit out at those closest to yourself and then you get that kind of strength and i think that's the strength that i actually got through my faith and then you get the determination to do something and not just sit there and wonder what's going to happen to me it strikes me, Julie, that this is, this is your mission. This is your calling. Well, it's pretty crazy, isn't it? You know, bells ringing across the world. But um, it's just a unique thing to do. And I think bells do call people to worship. But I think I wanted those bells to support people with blood cancer, you know, to actually say, you're not on your own. Because every time I hear those bells ring, I don't feel like I'm on my own. You say, is this your mission? People are a bit put on earth for, for different reasons. It could be all part of a plan, I don't know. But without it, I don't think it would have given me the strength to get to this point where I am now. And I'm very, very grateful. I feel loved. Now, I know that your campaign has had a massive boost recently. Tell me about that. Oh, absolutely. I actually wrote to the Dean, Dr John Hall at Westminster, and I asked him, like I asked many people, including yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you writing to my church. Yeah, <laughs> asking them to ring out in support of blood cancer. Usually the bells at Westminster Abbey are reserved for royalty and state occasions. But today Julie is here to enjoy the sound of the bells ringing out in her name as a guest of the Dean. And how many, how many towels have you grabbed? What, for Julie McDonald? Yes. Um, there's been 569 court appeals rung of Julie McDonald. Um, but for cathedrals and abbeys and minsters, this would be the 31st that's rung wow. Julie McDonald. And you've been to each one of these? No. <laughs> I'd like to think that people that maybe don't have faith but to hear bells rung out for them, for people with blood cancer, is incredible. And actually, it gives me a huge boost. <laughs> 